Right, it's time for your Gianna Volpe report, brought to you by Village Overhead Door in South Hole. Good morning, Bruce. Good morning, Gianna. Gianna, for those of you, and this is radio, so of course you can't see. But you, you look marvelous this morning. Oh, are you? What, what do you the, mean? The black oh, dress. I mean, wait, that's really nice. Are we? Are really, we forgetting? You, are we forgetting something, Bruce? What will we forget? You know, the billboard. I did the billboard. Brought to you by Village Overhead Door. Oh yeah, South we did. Hold. I did say that. Uh, you did. Say I that. never forget the billboard. Because Steve is bigger than me. He can beat me up. <laughs> Steve is bigger than me. I don't know. It sounded good. <laughs> He's such a nice guy. I don't. I, don't, I would feel bad. He really like, is. I would and feel bad. I would us. feel bad. He's a nice guy. He's a good egg. He is a good egg. He's tolerated us for the last year. Anyway, That's right. so like I was saying, friends, this is too bad. This is radio and not television because Gianna is wearing this really nice, um, stunning. I look stunning. Stu- I look too. stunning. Stunning black uh, black dress, and and, I'm, and I particularly like the. Um, the black nylon stockings, very yeah. nice, very just, and and the hair is really good. <laughs> and Gianna has these really expressive eyes, and and when she does them up, it's like they're incredibly expressive. Bruce, you know, we really? could do this for the whole hour. We could, I know. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Jessica Taphouse and Eric Hanley of Maximus Impact boxing uh i've gotten back into boxing right here in riverhead so all of these going on a date with gianna beware she could beat the hell out of you i can definitely beat the hell out of you there you go and i will well i won't unless you're you know so don't get fresh with her yeah don't get fresh it's not a good idea say that anymore so they're going to be fighting it's going to be jess's first golden gloves fight it'll be eric's second he won last week so that's pretty awesome. And then this morning on the show with us, we've got Gary Sellers. Good morning, Gary. Good morning. How are you doing? Very well. Very excited for the next uh, the March Revolution Number no. 9 variety series in Mattituck at the Crazy Fork Pub at Four Doors Down. Um, this will be our third one. This will be our third one. I wish it weren't so close. Otherwise, I'd ask you to uh, make one of your awesome posters. <laughs> I could still do it. Maybe if you want to just maybe put it on Facebook or something. Right. That would be great. So Gary Gary Sellers, phenomenal musician, but also graphic designer. And he does these great Yeah, we posters. all need a day job, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I kind of see it as a Superman Clark Kent kind of thing, you know? Like at night, you know, I'd, the glasses come off and I become a uh, Superman blues musician. And then during the day, I'm mild mannered, uh, Clark Kent graphic designer. You should get like like sus- like Superman suspenders or something, or just wear the shirt. Why not? Yeah, why not? I don't want to let two people, too many people know it's my secret identity and all that. <laughs> that's tr- that's true. Yeah, I keep Jane Fox on the down low, too. Bruce looks at me like. So what else is going on? We were going to ask you that. I mean, you're the one who's the guest. I mean, you obviously got stuff going on. You're obviously one of the five busiest people in the world. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I do a lot. I try to fill Uh-oh. my time up. Uh, it's uh, we only got so much of it, and it's the one thing you can't get more of, right? So what do you, what do you, what else do you got going on? Do you have any other shows that you want to promote while you're on here with us? Well, I've been playing a lot. Um, I, I've been starting to book up my schedule for the spring and summer, which is crazy to start thinking about summer already, but uh, um, I don't mind. Has it been happening um, as fast for you as it has for me in the past week? I feel like you know, I feel like I've gotten so many inquiries in the past week from all sorts of places. Like, everyone's thinking about it. Oh, yeah. I got shows booked out till August already. Um, wow. I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm the person in charge of my website. Um, updating it and, and creating it and all that other stuff. That's the, but, that's uh, the way I'm, of the world these days. Being too busy and all, I have to put all my dates up. But one of the things that's going to be going on is um, there's this great restaurant in East of Talkett that I've been playing at. And uh, we just uh, set up a monthly show there. The place is called Bliss. Oh, yeah. Talkett. Hasn't that been going on for a while? The monthly? Um, well, you know what? It's been sporadic. But um, me and the owner, uh, Ron, who's a wonderful guy, um, put together a show where we're going to do a third Friday of every month. Okay. Except this month. <laughs> this month is going to have to be the fourth Friday. So usually the third Friday, and then that's like the revolution is always the second Thursday. 
Yeah. It's so much to remember. But, yeah. Uh, I have to I have to push that club because it is one of my favorite places and the uh, aside from the atmosphere in there being wonderful, it's a uh, it's a great venue with a uh, uh, amazing food, which is always really important. I know you are a big food fan. I love food. Um, so you couldn't tell. <laughs> and uh, and he's a big supporter of music on Long Island, especially blues, which has been uh, as you know it's a uh, it's a niche. But it's hard to uh, it's hard to promote. It's hard to keep going. It's so important, though. It's such important music because I mean, it, it's American to, to the bone. I say that I say that almost all my shows, and I tell people it is an American art form. You know, it's one of the things that we can say. You know, in, in a time where people are always trying to uh, have Made in America stand for something, you know, and and not make it stand for more expensive uh, products, right? Better quality, but more expensive. Uh, it, it is an art form, and art in general always needs to be nurtured, you know. And uh, um, I, I don't know if you uh, if you mention uh, much about, about blues on your on your station, but uh, you know, a lot of people don't know my background. Uh, I came up under a, a, a very famous blues musician named Sam Taylor, who always pushed that his mission was to keep the blues alive. And Sam and Taylor did a lot that. of. Did a lot of performing in the 1950s in the dawn of rock and roll on uh, on shows that were put together by Alan Freed, like at the Paramount. How did you hook up with him? How did you hook up with Sam uh, Taylor? He also oh, played at the Vale Eleven, like their last the blues Man festival. Taylor, who you're mentioning? Yeah. The saxophonist was his dad. Oh. This was Sam Taylor Jr. Oh. And he was a he was a guitarist. His son, um, who is. Um, um, unfortunately, no longer with us, but um, a an absolute amazing singer, musician, and uh, and songwriter came up under. Uh, he was one of the original Starlighters in Joey D and the Starlighters, and left them to work with the Beach Boys and did some work with James Brown and did work with Otis Redding and Sam and Dave, you know, and wow. uh, did work with the Osley Brothers and the BT Express, and um, you know, kind of came up through the the late 50s through the 60s and the 70s, you know, and then in the 80s kind of really zeroed in on his own career and uh, and was out there under his own name. And um, myself, as well as, you know, uh, when he when he moved out to uh, Long Island, which wasn't until um, the early 90s, I believe, um, was when I actually started to meet him. And, uh, and he's kind of put a band together out here and uh, I wasn't initially a member, but once I became a member, like he and I became good friends, and, uh, and we were friends before I was a member. I used to just kind of follow the band around as a fan and uh, try to try to be helpful in any way I could. You know, whether it's helping them carry equipment or helping them sell CDs. You know, I did I did whatever I could, and kind of just learned um, by sitting in the audience and like taking notes and like a little notebook I had with me all the time and. That's the greatest fun. story. So that's yeah, like it was a great time. I would always go out to places and everyone would see me with a, like a like one of those black marble notebooks, and they're always like, "What is he doing?" And I'm like, from I was groupie just to down group member, little things I wanted to remember, little things I had to. I was picking up, soaking it all up like a sponge. What is what's some like what what would you say the biggest lesson or the greatest lesson that Sam taught you was? Well. As a leader of a band on Long Island, I can say that leading a band is probably one of the unspoken traits that a lot of people don't think about. Most people just worry about the playing aspect and getting out there, but um, keeping the camaraderie between the band members and uh, morale and, and, of course, encouraging to get the best music out of them, I would say is definitely something that Sam taught me. Um, you know, where, like, it, you know, obviously, you know, when we're out there and playing music, it's we're professional, and this is, uh, you know, it's work, but it's, it's it's work with a labor of love. I had to imagine um, that that's a really difficult thing to do, that it's something that not many people can do, and it's got to it's got to be just, like, all the time. you got to be sensitive about what you're saying and, and how you're approaching uh, the members of the band and... Oh, they're wonderful. Is it? I, mean, I, I see them as like they're they're like friends first and mm -hmm. band members second. You know, 
that's a, that's a really good way to approach it. Do you think that that's one of the reasons that you're successful at being at leading a band? Well, <laughs> successful is such a subjective term. You know? <laughs> are are you gonna have the whole band out here when you come out, or are you are you gonna do um, acoustic? Oh, what when I come out to the show there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna try to bring the guys. I want to. I want to put on an electric show. I would love that. Because that's the you know it's got all the it's got so much more energy. I, I love doing um, the acoustic shows that I've done are are fun, but they're a little bit more intimate. Maybe in a really really small place, it could be fun. But um, uh, even even if I was to come out and do my trio, you know, just me and my drummer and bass player, um, just the energy is who, so much higher. Who are the rest of it, who are the rest of the band? Outside of well, um, my band members have been rotating for a little a little while. I've always been trying to zero in on on band members that would uh, that I would keep as a steady core band because mm-hmm. um, you know the more times you play with the same guys, obviously you know you lock in and you, you get more used right. to guys. And a lot of my some of my band members have been with me nine, ten years, and some of them are a little yeah. newer. But uh, uh, at the moment, my drummer has been with me a long time. His name is uh, Dan LaForge. He's a, a well-known musician on Long Island. He's also a guitar player in his own right. And, uh, um, wonderful person. Great friend. Um, then on keyboard, I have uh, Sal D. Pasquale, who I met at uh, a lot of the open mic nights here in uh, like Rocky Point, more in like the uh, North Shore, Suffolk County area over here. It's weird to say, like, I'm always like, when I talk to people, I'm always sounds like I'm the furthest east from anyone they've ever heard of. But you guys are even further east than me. Oh, yeah. We're we're out here. <laughs> we're yeah, out okay. here. <laughs> um, and then uh, uh, on uh, on bass, I I got uh, John Agason, who is a uh, another wonderful person. Um, kind of came up in the blues world a little bit, but uh, took a long time in the reggae world. Interesting. Does he bring any of that and, to the, uh, to your music? A, he's got a really yeah, it's like a totally different kind of vibe to the band. But um. <gasps> They're all wonderful people, and we all get along incredibly well. And uh, I think that that uh, chemistry on stage, even off stage, definitely has a lot to do with the comfort of just being able to create the music. Interesting. Because that's really all you know. Like it's, it's one of those genres where you uh, you just kind of set up. Yeah, the, it's all about feel all the, and all vibe. All the opportunity for you know creativity to be there because you can't plan it. Mm-hmm. You just kind of have to set up an environment where it can just happen and then just go and see what happens. Where do you guys record? Well, we haven't yet. <sighs> um, I do, I, my, my album that I have, um, which is kind of old at this point, I, I feel guilty about it. I've been writing, but uh, I haven't been able to get into the studio again. But uh, my last album, which was uh, Soul Apparatus, which was released in 2010, was recorded at a, a studio in Westbury. Okay. Um, by a guy named Don Casal. I don't know if. Uh, you should check know. out. Um, um, he was a he was a wonderful guy. Um, kind of a Long Island legend. Um, owned a recording studio at his house for many years. Worked at Decca for many years and uh, recorded people like Aretha Franklin and the Rascals and. Uh, what? I think his claim to fame was he was the engineer and uh, and the guy who hit the record button when. Uh, Iron Butterfly was just jamming in the studio, and he was the guy who recorded, and it got it a visa. What? Yeah. Well, yeah, you, you have no idea. Like, all these weird, you know, instances. You meet this guy, you meet this guy, next thing you know, you're like, what? So you weird. Know, you, you, you guys, you know, the first long-running song, you know, give this shot, he's a, a water bathroom break, you know? We're definitely going to have to have you back on the show, Gary, to talk more, to tell us more stories. In the meantime, I'm so excited for you to be bringing the blues to the March Revolution Number no. 9 Variety Series, free from 7 to 11 on March 9th at the Crazy Fork in Four Doors Down. Uh, we'll be back. Every villain thinks they're a hero especially on the east end of Long Island. Timothy Dune is one such man. He's a tortured soul, and you won't be able to put down Victor Giannini's new novel, Counselor, as you're reading about him and what could happen to the east end. Roger Rosenblatt of Time magazine called Counselor an important piece of work. Robert Reeve says Counselor is compelling and will linger in your mind. Don't bury your head in the newspaper or in the sand. Read Counselor. 
Victor Giannini's new novel, available in paperback or on Kindle from Amazon.com or Silverthought.com. Counselor, the story of what once was an idyllic place that's become home to McMansions and private estates and its effect on one person. Counselor by Victor Giannini, available on Amazon.com. An overhead door serves a purpose, and it should be as beautiful as the rest of your home or building. For more than 30 years, Village Overhead Doors has been creating and installing beautiful garage doors for contractors and homeowners on the North and South Forks. They also install automatic garage door openers that open with the click of a remote, so there's no getting out of the car in bad weather. For a wide range of styles from lifetime steel doors to custom-made wood doors and for all your garage door needs, please call 765-4963 today and find out how your garage door can be a beautiful focal point of your home or building's exterior. Village Overhead Doors of South Hill, 765-4963. Make the call and let them add beauty and value to your home or business. Back on the Gianna Volpe Report, brought to you by author Celine Keating, by the Crazy Fork in Mattituck, and, of course, by Village Overhead Door in Southhold. And we are back with Mike Rusinski on the phone with us, who will also be there tonight um, alongside Celine Keating, our current current sponsor of GVR, who will be speaking tonight um, between 7 and 8 at the Crazy Fork in Mattituck at the Revolution Number no. 9 Variety Series. It's a free show between 7 and 11 tonight. I will be performing, Celine will be performing, and Mike will be performing tonight. Hello, how are you t- this morning, Mike Rusinski? I'm good. Good morning, Gianna. Good morning. I wanted to, I wanted to also cross promote the um, the events that you hold. So tell us a little bit about about what you do out in East Hampton. Um, every Sunday at the Harbor Grill, which is on uh, Three Mile Harbor Road up in Springs, I do a uh, open mic from three to six. And uh, it's a wonderful gathering of local performers and got a good following of listeners, too, which is amazing. They love coming there just to hear the music every Sunday. Oh, wow. I know the Harbor Grill. The local I, crowd. They have good soup, right? Um, they have good everything. Their calamari is one of their famous dishes that they make. It's really good. Nice. A little different than most. It has an Asian fusion spicy sauce that comes with it. Are you still doing MJ Dowling's as well? Yep, I also do MJ Dowling's in Noyak on Wednesdays, so that's why I'm, uh, if I sound a little sleepy, because I was there last night. Oh, you were, you, to 11. you ran it last night? Yeah, that's every Wednesday, 8 to 11. Man after my own Noyak. heart, working all night, getting up in the morning to go on the radio only to play the next night. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be a long day. That's why we'll both need naps. I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it already, which is weird. I never used to nap. So are you excited about coming north tonight? Yeah, I'm looking forward. I haven't. I love going, going up to the North Fork. I just never get the chance because I'm always doing my things here and staying up late, and I want to support uh, you and uh, Jenny as well. Jenny Griffin, Miss Jenny Griffin, will be performing tonight. And we're also having, have you ever seen the Gary Sellers Band? I, you know, I met Gary Sellers a, a while ago, and um, really nice guy. Love his music, and I'm looking forward to seeing him again. I haven't seen him in a long time. The Gary Sellers band will be, will be, you know, sort of our our main act tonight, starting at 10:30, um, bringing us the blues, which we know Mike loves. Oh, I'm a blues junkie. And um, you're also a pilot, Mike. Which I think is is the mo- one of the most interesting things about you. Um, do you do you still have do you still have your plane? I do. Actually, I have a little Cessna in Montauk. And how many how many planes are there at that airport? Um, on the field, all year round is about four or five. Wow. And uh, in the summer, it fills up. Sometimes we'll have up to fifty airplanes on the ground in, in the summer in Montauk. That's such a, that's such an, it's almost a caricature of the model of how the seasonality of out here, you know, it's like four, four to five guys in the winter and then suddenly that, that balloons to 50. Is it sort of like, uh, every year who are these guys? It's like, it kind of like, um, 
when the Canada geese show up? Mm -hmm. It's actually, it's kind of neat. You, you start to get to know the people that come in in the summer, and you actually have... You know, consider them friends that you see in the summer that fly in. You know, there are oh. planes. You drive up to see their plane park, so you give them a call and maybe go meet for lunch or something. Right, because it's still it's still a small, intimate community. The small engine airplane uh, pilots, and also to pilot small planes. Like it's it really is like a club. You know, everyone you got to be you got to have like a pass a real passion for it because otherwise. I imagine planes are kind of like boats, what they say, that they're holes that you throw money in, in the water. It is. It's, it's one of those things. If it gets under your skin, it's, it, becomes, it becomes part of you. And you don't even need to be flying. Just being at the airport, being around airplanes, around pilots, it's just a, uh, it's a passion. But just like music. It's a, it's a sickness, and it will catch you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, but it's a good one. <laughs> so you better, yeah. So if you want to catch it, Come tonight, 7 to 11 at the Crazy Fork in Mattatuck on the main road um, for free. We're going to have stand-up comics, musicians, uh, poets, and authors. We've got you. We've got Lisa Dabrowski. We've got um, Tugboat Manny and Pat Marone, Jenny Griffin, um, Liza Coppola, Gary Sellers Band, Closing Out the Evening, Chris Hurley. I'm going to forget someone, and, and it's going to be horrible. If you, if, <laughs> I'm going to forget. Linda and, and George are going to be there tonight. I should have my phone open going through everybody. You're going to be performing tonight? I'll, I'll be there, yeah. I'll be doing my right. set Mermaids, Madness, and Monogamy. And uh, the funny thing about this <laughs> set is that I've tried to perform it. This will be my third time. Third time's a charm. But part of the set is that I wear these big fluffy angel wings. So I've shown up to two different places wearing big white fluffy angel wings for seemingly no reason. <laughs> so tonight that will be revealed as to why. <laughs> no, I'm not just a crazy person. And that's another part of my set. It's about um, not being crazy, despite everyone's... Well, so if you think crazy, I'm crazy... We all found each other. Yeah, if you think I'm crazy and you want to learn the truth, you can do so tonight at the Crazy Fork in Mattatuck um, on the main road. Being here. <laughs> do you, you get that too? Because you're a Gemini. I know. We, uh, um, and I may bring another Gemini with me who's left-handed. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know for this. The, it might the the venue may not be able to handle all of the all of the difference. Maybe able to take the roof off of that one. Al James, Al James will be opening the show. He is great. Al James, Celine Keating, Susan Dingle, Maggie Bloomfield, and Evan Weiss. I also forgot to mention. So we've got yeah, we've got acts going from seven to, through eleven o'clock tonight. Um, everyone gets 15 minutes except for the Gallery Sellers Band. Um, I gave them a little bit of more of an open reign for bringing the whole band out, um, which maybe we can do that someday with you, Mike. Have you ever played in like a band? You, you played like with a band? I do. I have a, a group of musicians that are all good, good friends of mine that we put ourselves together and um, we know a lot of songs and we just have a really good time playing. Usually they're actually doing a benefit in, um, on March 24th at the Stephen Talk House. Nice! Uh, a local, local woman who is uh, dealing with breast cancer right now, and she's on the uh, on the mend, on the good side of it. Good, excellent. So help out her family a little bit. Well, another local family who's a family of, literally family of a friend of uh, one of the band members. Great. That's, a, that's the East End way, helping each other out like that. Phenomenal. Yeah. So that's March 24th at the Talk House? Yeah, March 24th, Stephen Talk House. It's, uh, I think they're calling it Rally for Alley. It's for Allison uh, Bennett. Excellent. Allison. Excellent. And so, and what are you calling yourselves? Do you guys have a name? We actually call ourselves the Dog Watchers. The Dog Watchers. And uh, it, it came to be because I showed up for practice and Anthony, our guitar player, and Toby's drummer were walking their respective dogs. And during practice, the dogs were weaving through our legs in the studio. <laughs> so uh, that's it. We are the Dog Watchers. 
I'm a kitty watcher right now, but that doesn't seem to have the same ring to it. What's it? The, I'm a kitty watcher right now, but that doesn't seem to have the same ring. I, I always like the Lone Rangers. If you're a um, if you're a musician, you probably love the movie Airheads. Um, they show it on Comedy Central sometime with Brendan oh, Fraser. I see that one. I've heard of it, but I don't know that one. Oh, you gotta see that, Mike. You gotta see that. That's a great flick. If you're a musician, I think it's about it's about a a, a hair metal band that that holds up a local radio station. <laughs> Sometimes. Wait. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Wait a minute, both of you. Don't be getting any ideas. <laughs> the Lone Ranger. Now, Mike, I got a, I got the perfect radio station for you to ransack. If we show up, it'll be a bunch of middle-aged guys with a couple of dogs. Well, that's yeah, okay. The, the dog watchers. Are They're waiting come. for you on Redwood Road <laughs> in Sag Harbor. Is that where the... Oh, there the, you go. No, yeah. no, wait. Is, is that where that big tower is? Pardon me? I didn't hear what you said. Is that where that big tower is? In Sag that's Harbor? where that big tower is. That's right. <laughs> you can go there. You can, and, and while you're there, ransacking the place, you can put something on Swap and Shop. Oh, LNG? Yeah, I used to work there. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be hiding watchers. in his bus on Saturday. Yeah, Brian will be like, what? Yeah. He, he, Brian would be excited. He would be like, look at this. Brian would love it. Look Gary would love cute. it. But no, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be hiding with Gary on Saturday in Gary's bus because it's going to be cold. I'm going to be in the parade in West Hampton Beach. Cool. I love when you guys are together. It makes me happy. Um, anything I can do to make you happy. Gianna, I was just <laughs> thinking to myself. <laughs> I don't know about you, but... Uh, I think of this often. What can I do to make Gianna happy? Oh. What could I do? Only everyone were like you. You know, I, I, but I try, you know. <laughs> you do a great job. Thank you. I'm trying not to reveal the, um, again, the uh, the two-piece on the beach in L.A. a year ago. Yeah. Or well, the snow angels up You're on the roof. trying and failing. I know. Miserably. The uh, black full-length cocktail, uh, the black full-length gown. As long as you don't talk about what I'm wearing today, it's fine. Well... He, he sits back in his chair like, now that you mention now it. Now that you mention it. <clears throat> Gianna is resplendent today. <laughs> in her in it. her um in her flannel jammies. Oh, okay. I the like red those. plaid flannel jammies with without the plunging neckline. This thing is like it might as well be a turtleneck. Yeah. It's Christmas um, Eve nineteen forty three. And she's wearing these these <laughs> I'm wearing my red flannel pajamas. And these Big fuzzy slippers. I don't get that. I used to have. Did you? Slippers. Do you drive the? Can you drive the car wearing those big fuzzy slippers and, have, and and shift? You know all those gears. You know how they have like the the bunny slippers. Quote, yes. Quote. I had whole rabbits, whole bunny slippers. So they were like bunny, act, an entire bunny, and I would put my foot. So I would just be walking. She put around. her foot in it, and she'd step on its tail. No, no, no. The tail was behind. I would pretty much be putting my foot into its body, and then my feet would become two you little know, rabbits. I'm just thinking to myself. I don't know about you. I was much quicker uh, on my but, feet. Uh, I, well, I can. I, I should hope you were much quicker on your feet. Hell, you were wearing a rabbit for crying out loud. <laughs> Bruce, you I, gotta, I wonder what you're going to do on Easter morning. I I I really got it. You know, I want to get you too, Mike. I want to get you guys boxing. Down, no, down no, 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 no. It's no. good for you. There's a lot of things that yeah, are good I'm for you. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I'm a lover, not a fighter. That's fine. You know, I said the same I'm thing. Both. My wife, my, it was funny you should say that. I said that to my wife once, and she said, no, you're not. <laughs> oh. So, I, I, you know, I. Oh, snap. Take Daddy. it from where it comes, you know. I love it. Anyway, we got to wrap this oh, fun up. Oh, we got to wrap it up. All right, so tonight. Please come see Mike Rusinski play at the Crazy Fork in Mattituck between 7 and 11 for the Re Revolution Number no. 9 Variety Series, emceed by yours truly, um, Celine Keating from Novels That Rock at Union Square, uh, Barnes & Noble on March 31st. So you can see her tonight between 7 and 8 at the Crazy Fork in Mattituck. This is Gianna Volpe signing off at 1390 WRIV, your hometown station. Play For Me by Celine Keating is the story of one woman's journey to rediscover her authentic self through the power of music. Music has the power to transform, and Celine Keating explores that in Play For Me. Come to a book signing and discussion with live music by Cass Dillon and Kim Vogels on March 31st at 6.30 p.m. 
at Barnes & Noble in Union Square in New York City. Rolling Stone contributing editor and UPenn professor Anthony DeCurtis will moderate the event with Celine Kidding and two other authors. They'll discuss their novels, the writing process, and the stories that brought their passion for music into print. Read Play For Me by Celine Keating and come to a book signing and discussion on March 31st at Barnes & Noble Union Square in New York City.